Those are the headlines that we are tracking for you all evening today on ET Now. Well, let's welcome now on the show Ashish Shankar, the MD and CEO of Motila Losfal Private Wealth. Ashish, thanks so much for taking our time and joining us today on the Money Show. Um, how real a threat in India especially do you think is inflation? Now, of course, it's become more of a global threat, but I would say that for the last many years, um, India has been one of the few countries that has to tackle with inflation. And it seems to be picking up pace right now in these last one, two months, three, four months, in fact, especially. It probably couldn't have come at a worse time, really, because we just have started coming out of the second wave. There is a possibility of a third wave uh, right ahead of us as well. So. Is inflation no longer just a macro matter? Do you think it's come to the point where it's hitting all of our wallets as well, as is evidenced by the most common denominator, fuel prices? Uh, hi, Mubina. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, I think you've chosen a very pertinent topic. It is uh, something that impacts all our lives and our wallets as well. So uh, you have to look at inflation from uh, two perspectives, Mubina. One is the longer-term sustainable inflation. And second is the challenge of uh, the inflation that is rearing its head at the moment, right? Why I'm saying at the moment is because the last one year has not been a normal year, right? You had the pandemic hitting us sometime in March last year. Uh, so the first quarter of last financial year was basically shut, right? The economy was shut. So you had inflation collapsing last year. So it is a little bit of a base effect. But having said that, uh, you are also seeing a lot of commodity prices rising. So steel prices are rising, aluminum prices are rising, copper prices are rising. Uh, prices of certain services are also rising because there are supply side shocks as well. Uh, not everybody has been able to start his business immediately the moment the unlock has been announced. Right. So inflation is definitely something to be worried about at the moment. But as an investor or somebody who's retired and is wanting to ensure that his funds stay above water as far as inflation is concerned, we have to look at the sustainable inflation. So we've done this analysis last 30 years. The sustainable inflation is about 6-7%. So I think that is what you have to keep in mind when you're building a portfolio and when you're investing your money. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, points taken, uh, Ashish. You know, let's talk then about um, the fact that, like you said, you know, it could not have come at a, at a bad time. We've just, worse time rather, because we've just come out of the pan pandemic. Our income levels as well have either been stagnant or worse, they have dropped because a lot of people have lost their jobs or their businesses as well have been disrupted. Um, so all the more do you think inflation is something that will at this point of time not just eat into but completely erode the purchasing power of our savings as well uh, which we may have kept aside? Yes, uh, so uh, Bobina, I think uh, inflation has always been uh, a challenge as far as savings and investments are concerned. It's the silent uh, eroder of our wealth over time. So just to give perspective to people, if let's say inflation is close to 7%, then you're basically having your purchasing power every 10 years, which means a rupee today is worth 50 pesa 10 years down the line. And uh, that is exactly what it does. But what is important, Mubina, is uh, that inflation is is a constant. I mean, it sometimes it, it is high. There are periods where inflation is high. There are periods where inflation is low. And like I said, in the longer term, the average inflation is what matters. But what is important is what kind of a portfolio do you create? Uh, to ensure that you withstand these different periods of uh, inflation and at the same time ensure that your purchasing power of your portfolio keeps keeps moving up. Simply put, the mats, uh, the way it works is that your portfolio has to grow at a rate of return which is faster than what inflation is growing. How do you do that then? Uh, that the rate of interest or the rate of return is faster than inflation. What are the products? Because today, if I look at a one-year fixed deposit on an average with an SBI or any of the other prominent banks, it would barely be five and a half odd percent. And inflation, as we saw in the month of June, was six percent. <coughs> Excuse me. In the month of May as well, it was six percent. So basically, if I am ending up paying five percent more for products and services, I actually have negative one percent from my fixed deposit. Uh, absolutely, 
you know you're right at the moment uh, any fixed income investor is losing purchasing power in fact uh, 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 the yields on triple a bonds are 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 close to 5% as well now uh, how does one battle this see uh, there are uh, you know let me talk about the building blocks of a portfolio there are four types of investments that can go into a portfolio right there is one type which is what i call a growth uh, investment or a growth asset class now these are investments which typically tend to beat inflation handsomely over a period of time they may be volatile in the near term they may be they may go negative but over time they tend to beat inflation handsomely now these are basically either it could be indian equities or us equities so these are investments in uh, businesses and good businesses tend to create uh, more more returns over time than inflation second uh, asset class essentially is what i call fixed income which is your regular income asset class right now these investments typically over time beat inflation marginally at this point in time you are right mobina that they are not beating inflation because if you are investing in a triple a bond which is giving 5% and inflation is 6 and a half you are not beating inflation but what we have observed over a longer period of time 3 years 5 years 7 years inflation tends to average lower and fixed income tends to average higher but you will marginally beat inflation so at best fixed income is a capital protection asset class right the third asset class which one needs to have in his portfolio is what i call the insurance asset class what is the insurance asset class essentially gold because this is an asset class which protects your portfolio in times of economic turmoil or crisis right so you saw last year when the pandemic hit markets gold was the best performing asset class in 2020 gold went up 28% similarly in 2008 when the subprime crisis happened gold went up 26% but there are long periods where gold gives negative returns or underperform but over time longer periods we've seen gold also has the ability to beat inflation albeit with a lot of volatility however during crisis periods it acts as an insurance in the portfolio and it protects the portfolio and you are able to rebalance the portfolio with whatever returns you make on gold and lastly but not the least one should ensure some amount of liquidity in the portfolio so these are the four 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 broad asset classes uh, uh mobina and i think if one has to beat inflation at the same time ensure that your portfolio value uh remains intact then the 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 only solution today is to have a portfolio which is diversified across different asset classes hmm Well, yeah, it's all about diversification, really, and proper asset allocation. Once you've made a plan, try to stick with it. And yes, like Ashish said, you know, um, uh, fixed income they they will be better in the long run, but you know the. uh the, the return will be just slightly above inflation you cannot expect some major inflation beating returns plus of course add on to that that scope of wealth creation as well that you do want when you're putting your money you know in, in an investment class you're not just looking at purchasing power preservation but you're also looking at wealth creation you want your money to work for you and not just you know uh, protect you against inflation so uh, ashish today with inflation being so high Uh, let's assume that we are talking to the younger investors out there uh, does it make sense for them to consider equities more actively for them to put the larger chunk of their money for equities and in fact let me broaden the the scope of the audience as well to all ages of investors uh, you know given that in inflation is so high even if let's say you are slightly older or, or you know you don't want to take on that risk capital do you think that they will have to take it on because inflation is a problem Uh, Mubina, so let me address the younger population first. See if you have the ability to uh, earn earn uh, for the next, let's say, ten years, fifteen years, right? Then you must consider a much larger portion of your allocation towards equities. Keep aside some money uh, for emergency. Uh, ensure that you buy a good insurance policy for any crises. right but the rest of the money can basically go into equities as an asset class and since you have the ability to earn regular income for a longer period of time you can do it through sips by selecting mutual funds or in active funds or index funds of your choice because this is the only asset class that can give you growth and handsomely beat inflation over a long period of time 
and even if it beats inflation marginally maybe now over long periods of time it tend amounts to a huge 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 difference in terms of the corpus that you can accumulate second coming coming to people who are depending on their corpus for regular income right now uh, most people uh, view equities as a very volatile asset class because in the near term when markets fall it can look like your capital has got eroded but what uh, one doesn't realize is inflation silently erodes your capital so for example inflation if it is 7% and your debt funds are giving 10% 5% right you are doubling your money in debt funds over 10 years whereas inflation is having your purchasing power in uh close to sorry it's doubling at 5% you're doubling your money in 14 or 15 years right whereas inflation is having your purchasing power in 10 years so you're actually losing your capital uh in spite of being in fixed income as an asset class so for retired investors i think they need to relook at their asset allocation in today's context and ensure that even they have some amount of allocation to equities uh obviously what is the percentage of uh, equity allocation will depend on their ability to tolerate volatility and uh what kind of cash flows they want to receive from the portfolio and for that i would sincerely advise them to consult a financial advisor but if i just look at it as a thumb rule we have done some maths maybe now over the last 30 odd years and what we found is if you have close to a 30 to 40% allocation to risk assets that is equities and within that equities now even us is becoming more and more prominent as an asset class for indians so if you let's say have 25 30% in indian equities and let's say you have 20 odd percent in us equities and the rest in fixed income uh, and some allocation to gold let's say between 10 and 10 and 15% and you rebalance this portfolio every year this portfolio works very well i mean it tends to beat inflation it tends to beat fixed income and it protects capital over a 3 year period because gold kind of comes to the rescue when there is volatility in equity markets so that's broadly what we've been recommending uh, uh, conservative relatively conservative investors and people who want to ensure that the portfolio runs faster than inflation but at the same time if a crisis hits market they are not rattled hmm. okay you know I, i'm so glad you busted this myth as well uh, which is there prevalent among a lot of senior citizens that okay you know now that i've attained uh, seniority or uh, you know i'm i'm retired now and i don't have that regular flow of income coming in equities are a big no no the point is that after retirement as well it's a whole process it's not that retirement is like an end game of sorts when it comes to financial planning so according to ashish and according to his well researched calculation you need to still put 30 35 40% of your money in equities um because a uh, it help you fight inflation and b it's just the right amount to ensure that you're not too rattled um you know if there is a crisis that may hit us in the future unfortunately this is not the first or the last crisis uh, so yeah you need to have a, a well diversified uh, portfolio and good asset allocation of course it's always best to consult um, and advise as well and have a one on one so he or she can better understand your own risk appetite too Uh, well uh, ashish uh, thanks so much for that we'll do one thing now we are going to take some questions and queries that have come in for you uh, and let me tell our viewers if, if you have any questions on inflation or you know uh, in- investing how you should go about it uh, shoot them to us on our email address the money show at etnow.tv so ashish our first question for you is something similar to actually what we just already discussed but still for the benefit of this particular viewer and if for anybody who's just tuned in i guess it it makes sense to readdress it shyam punjwani says that fixed deposits and even debt mutual funds are not giving good returns he's right and even when we look at debt mutual funds yes in 2020 some of them gave you know close to double digit returns like gilt funds long duration but this year literally none of them are doing well even a short duration fund has barely eked out a 1% return so for senior citizens what are the options especially given the inflation i know ashish that we've just addressed it but like i said for any of our viewers just tuning in what would you like to tell viewers like shyam punjwani right see uh, you have to look at it from two points of view mobina one uh, you have to look at how much returns you've made over the last 3 to 4 years because if this gentleman has been invested for the last 3 to 4 years he would have still made reasonable amount of returns in fixed income possibly between 7 to 8% now if his portfolio is consisting only of fixed income investments then definitely i would advise him to look at some allocation into equities uh, as uh, we just discussed the next 3 4 years 
uh, it's quite possible that fixed income investors may not beat inflation as well uh, the reason is that uh, central banks across the world are penalizing savers to promote growth in their economies right so the only only way you can beat inflation is to have some asset classes which are growth asset classes so i don't know this gentleman's exact situation but definitely he should give a consideration to have a little allocation to equities maybe 10 or 20% at the same time you know don't be too worried uh, you've seen good times of fixed income last uh, two years uh, right now rates are lower but eventually uh, rates will 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 uh, average out and you will get to earn higher returns in fixed income maybe a couple of years or 3 years down the line but till then i think it's very important to have some growth allocation in the portfolio through equities right fair enough and you know if if uh, experts say of course that india's the best of india's growth years are still ahead of us we are anticipating double digit growth as well so if I mean, might as well take part, right, in this opportunity that you're getting, and the best way to do that is with equities. Okay, let's take on board one more question from Subramaniam Pichai. He says, now that inflation is six percent, should we invest in balanced advantage funds instead of debt funds? He also says that he has a retirement corpus of fifty lakh rupees from um, the private company where he was working with. He wants to know for how long this fifty lakhs can sustain him. Basically, how much money can I withdraw from the fund, and for how many? Many years, so balanced advantage or debt funds. Given the current inflation situation, the movement in equity and debt funds, uh, do you think uh, Mr. Pichai's line of thinking is right? Yeah, so uh, it's an interesting question. Uh, uh, two things that Mr. Pichai needs to consider before he takes any decision. One is uh, definitely, like I uh, mentioned earlier as well, there has to be some allocation to equities in the portfolio to beat inflation going forward. uh balanced advantage funds basically give you allocation to equities in a more calibrated manner so typically if i understood uh, the nomenclature right he's talking about funds which move uh, in and out of equities or rather funds which moderate equity exposure based on market valuations so there are different funds out there which use different parameters like price to equity or price to book but they could move from 20% at the bottom to maybe they can go right up to 60 70% allocation in equities so it is a more controlled way of taking exposure to equities a less volatile way because they automatically reduce equity allocation in this fund when markets are high and and vice versa right having said that he also has to consider the fact that a debt fund once you lock in your money let's say the yields are closer to 5 6% broadly your returns will be closer to that number over time right uh, whereas in uh, balanced advantage funds over a longer period we have witnessed that it does better than debt funds in fact uh, it beats inflation as well and the ranges are closer to 8 to 12% however having said that the ranges that i just spoke about 8 to 12% are longer term return ranges maybe over 5 years or something like that in a one year period remember even a balanced advantage fund can go negative it can fall 10 it can be negative 10% at the same time there are years when equities does phenomenally well it can also give you 20 30% returns but it evens out over a longer run so if he's if he's comfortable with this kind of a range and volatility then i feel that he should start by allocating some amount of his corpus if he's never invested uh, and he's got only 50 lakhs he should not you know look at completely changing his portfolio allocation let him go you know step by step 20% first 30% one 10 more percent and get comfortable with the volatility in the in the in the product right definitely a good idea to have a fund which is managing his equity exposure now how much can he withdraw from this and how many years uh, mubina i think the important piece of information which we are missing here is how much does he want to withdraw every month uh, uh, you know so if let's say balanced fund balanced advantage fund conservatively i take the lower range of 8% then you are talking about a, a 4 lakh per annum kind of a number but uh, you know if you remove 4 lakhs then your corpus is really not growing and you are not accounting for inflation so i think it needs a more uh, detailed conversation with the gentleman possibly with a financial advisor
All right, understandably. Uh, all right, well, I think with that, we are out of time as well, Ashish, anyway, on the show, uh, on this segment rather. Uh, so, thank you very much once again for joining us on ET Now and, you know, spending some time to answer our viewer questions and queries too. My pleasure, Mubina. Thanks a ton. And with that, we'll just take a very short We'll take a very short break right here on the show, but we'll be back uh, with our conversation on uh, credit risk funds. Don't go anywhere.